This is Moments of Truth with Andrew Marks, co-founder of Success Hacker. Today, I am joined by Patrick Sanders, customer success manager at Docibo. Patrick, tell us a bit more about your company and your role. Hey, Andrew, thanks. So, Docibo is a cloud-based learning management system that focuses, you know, on the traditional formal top-down approach of learning, but also what we call social learning or the informal type. Um, it's a robust LMS with multiple types of modules that are used for internal, external training, as well as partners and customers. Um, it puts learning kind of in the forefront and center for users, so they have a seamless experience in and out of all parts of the platform to drive a you know, better, greater engagement to learning outcomes. Uh, and your role? So I'm working uh, with strategic and enterprise accounts um, with Dutch Ebo. And are you a, are you a, are you a hero or are you a, you know, jack of all trades or are you a relationship CSM or? Um, or do you let's do a see. Bit of I mean, yeah. So CS is kind of ever changing um, from what I can tell joining uh, kind of the industry a couple of years ago. And um you know, when someone says they're a CSM, it, it kind of means, okay, let me ask another question. It right, doesn't exactly, mean, yeah. You know what they are. So um, I'm more of the, you know, the jack of all trades um, with customers, making sure that they're getting the most value out of the platform. Right. We do have a support team, a professional services team, okay. uh, and kind of a post-sales sales team. Um, but I just make sure that the customer gets what they need um, along uh, the relationship. Which, which makes sense. I mean, you, 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 uh, and it's not surprising that you landed at, uh, at Doce Bo given your background. So you're about eight years out of college and you spent six of that last eight years, you know, in teaching and kind of leading and kind of mentoring it, you know, type of, of role. So, you know, what, what I'm, I'd be interested in understanding, you know, outside of the, the domain experience that you bring to the table by, by taking on a role at a, at a company like this, you know, how did your experience in, in teaching and, and leading and mentoring folks, um, how does that play a part in how you, you uh, do customer success? You know, do, you know, just do your job and, and deal with your customers. No, it's a great question. I mean, it honestly kind of fell into my lap. Um, I think being a teacher for the years I was before I got into CS is definitely a big bonus um, when it comes to interacting with customers. Now I was teaching high school and, you know, leading college age kids. So dealing with kind of adults is a different world. Um, but in the same way, they're learning something new. Um, and so it was still like the methods that I had as a teacher in the classroom were still very applicable, making sure that, you know, the students are getting the most out of the classroom because we I've taught under block schedules for an hour and a half in the classroom. Then I taught, you know, where you just had 45 minutes. And so figuring out, you know, what, where is the kid at? Where is the student at? What can they gain, like gain? And then where do we need to kind of pause to understand where they're at? Uh, there's so many different types of learning styles uh, within students. But really when I was a teacher, I kind of would force myself to step into the student's shoes like figure out like, why are they in this classroom? I taught economics and so they were in it because it was required. So trying to make sure that they get the most out of a required class is a lot harder than trying to do an elective. So a lot of my customers, when it comes to, they're just trying to do the bare minimum, it's incentivizing them to also think through like, have you thought about this? Have you thought about this? What about this? What if you rearrange this? We've seen a lot of success when customers set it up this way. Is there a reason that you set it up this way? Really asking a lot of questions. Um, I guess you can call it, you know, the Socrative method, mm -hmm. but asking a lot of questions for them to think through why are they doing what they're doing? Um, because a lot of the times they just needed to do something or they just needed to, you know, pass the test. So they're going to do the bare minimum instead of thinking through like, how can I make this a more robust learning experience for our users? So I heard on, I heard empathy, I heard value realization, and I heard uh, open-ended questions. Mm -hmm. And these are all tools that you used 
for students in your in your in your high school and college classes yeah no it was i mean those are like core those are three core skills to be I, good at customer success i i agree it, it was it was really funny uh that it just kind of worked out that way um and, and learning the ins and out of the industry has has been a lot of fun too but when it comes to kind of my values and what i'm desiring to do is still very similar from a customer with a student. Um, one of the things that uh, has always been interesting is getting the student to like go, oh, I never thought of it that way. Or having the light bulb come on for a student. When I get to do that for a customer, that's also a, a ton of fun to experience that with a the customer. They're like, oh, I never knew that setting was there. Or I never knew you could figure it that way. Or I didn't know other customers were doing it that way. So whenever the light bulb comes on, that's a really, really uh, encouraging experience um, within CS. It's very uh, relatable back into the classroom. Yeah, very much so. I could see that. Yeah, that that light bulb moment is key. That's where, you know, we talk about how um, in in our in our uh, in our courses, uh, which you've been through, right? Is is when is onboarding complete, right? And it's that that light bulb moment, right? You remember yep. that, right? That yep. light bulb moment is 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 it right there? It's like it's not it's not that you've been trained. It's yeah. that oh, I get it now, right? I I've ex I can see the value. I've got that light bulb. I should have I should have pitched the course in the middle of that. No, no, no. Um. <laughs> I just no, but I just that jumped out at me when you were talking when you were saying the light bulb moment because that we we talk about that. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, and I think a lot of the times when it comes to students that have to do the class, getting them to take ownership of what they're trying to learn as well, not necessarily just tell me what I need to know for the test, but getting them to learn how to study on their own, learn how to think through, because economics is, it's categorized within social studies, but it definitely has its own little brand of, uh, of learning right. so trying to get students to think in a different way than they might traditionally be thinking through when it comes to a social studies class yeah. so getting students to think in a different way to engage into the subject material in a different way and challenging them to take ownership is something that is very very you know relevant within cs because yeah. you're not going to be able to do everything for your customer you're going to guide them, you're going to direct them, you're going to kind of, you know, root them along, encourage them, make sure they have all the tools that they need. But at the end of the day, they got to take ownership of what they're actually trying to accomplish within their software. Ownership and accountability. Yep. Right? Ownership and accountability. I also heard a little bit of, I heard a little bit of change management in there as well, <laughs> right? I, yep. I, I would think that for, for, you know, you've got kids in, in, in vi that have different learning styles and you've got mm -hmm. to help them, especially if they have bad learning styles, you've got to help them as a teacher, yep. I would assume, uh, help them change, right? Help them manage moving from what they're doing now to what they're, uh, what they should be doing. And, and we all know change is hard, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so, so how, how, um, how relevant was that, um, to, to, to school? Did you, you experience, I, I'm, I'm assuming you had to deal with that in your classes. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I think a lot of the times it's, it's stepping towards the student or stepping towards the customer and just asking them, why are you doing that? Not necessarily that direct, um, depending where you live, that might be fine. Um, but asking them like, why do you think that is the way that needs to be done? What is the background there? Why have you created these habits that creates a certain pattern that is not going to grow beyond a certain threshold? And really, I mean, a lot of what CS does um, is challenge the customer in making sure that they're going to be as successful as possible and thinking through what areas are they going to change and then what areas okay they're not going to change there i'm not going to spend any more time focusing on that area when there's a couple of other areas that i think i could win them over with 
So it's definitely adapting to what is possible in, in the meantime. Um, and then keeping that relationship going because I've seen so many times with students and with customers that, you know, I'm a new teacher or I'm a new CSM. So they're not really sure, you know, my ways of doing things. And so it takes a little while to build that relationship up. And so you might challenge them at the beginning. They may be like, oh yeah, 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 okay. But then they don't really know you. They don't really trust you yet. But over time, when you keep building that relationship, they might even come to you and be like, hey, I was thinking through this. And when you get them to proactively reach out to you instead of you trying to build that relationship, um, that's also a really encouraging thing. And in teaching the students would actually trust me um, in the long run, they would say, okay, he, he hasn't led me astray so far um, as much as in his ability to. So I'm going to kind of trust him when he says, have you thought about studying this way? Um, one of the great ways that I was a simple pitch to students is tell them that how would you learn it if you had to teach it? Or how would you learn it if you have to present it? Um, and so when you're thinking through that way of becoming the teacher yourself or training the trainer kind of thing, then you're going to get a lot of success that snowballs outside of your conversations with the, with the customer. Well, I, lo I love the trusted advisor, right? Yep. You, you're trying to, you're trying to achieve trusted advisor with the student. And it's one of the ultimate goals in customer success is getting that trusted advisor status. That's, that's fantastic. And, uh, I love it. And the, the teaching the teacher, uh, you know, yeah, very much so. Um, get them to uh, get them to show others, right? No better way to, to uh, um, help get a change driven is finding those people that uh, have the ability of teaching others and are enthusiastic about what you're doing to oh, teach yeah. them as well. Well, it's, all, it's also been so many times that the student actually taught me something um, because one, they had the time to study in detail the subject material versus I have to keep going and going and going. Um, same with customers. Customers are digging into parts of the platform that I might not get to do that often. And so they're, when they can share something with me and then I can say, oh, that's amazing. We have that connection that keeps building that relationship that it's, it's a partnership, you know, um, and, and it's a lot of fun to be a part of that. But then also using those kind of maneuvers and skills to get that ball rolling um, because the customer might not be on board because it might be a required class kind of thing. Right. Right. Excellent. Um, you know, and one of the things we, we uh, talked about is, um, you know, coming into this conversation is setting expectations and boundaries. So I'm, I'm really <laughs> interested in how, you know, you, you leverage that, that experience, that background, that, those, those skills that you've honed through, you know, the years of teaching that you've done uh, to, in particular, manage expectations and set expectations and boundaries with customers. Yeah, I mean, with, with students, they're going to try to get as much leeway as possible. Um, I, I definitely learned how to say no as a teacher um, when they're like, can we, can we postpone the test? Or can, can we just, you know, have a study hall? Or can we go outside, like, constantly telling students no? Um, it's definitely something that became second nature. And that's kind of rolled in to CS in a lot of ways because CS is still a new industry in a lot of ways, and customers might not get it sometimes. But if you're able to kind of set the right expectations, like at the beginning of a semester, we would set, you know, a syllabus. It's like, this is what you're going to accomplish. This is your responsibilities. These are my responsibilities. Kind of setting those expectations with students and then just reinforcing them over and over and over throughout that year. Same thing with the customers. When you're having that kickoff call or when you're having that first engagement with a customer, finding the ability to speak into like, this is my responsibilities, these are your responsibilities and engaging into that relationship. So it's a healthy relationship and they're not reaching out, you know, every single day, multiple emails because they think you're more of a support person or they're reaching out every single day with emails because you're a design person, you're a customization person um, or never reaching out to you. Um, basically making sure that engaging into those expectations um, is going to be setting up the customer for success. And also because you're not managing just that customer, you're managing, you know, multiple customers, most likely uh, 20, 60, 100 plus, I, I don't know. 
but when it comes to managing your time, you have to set the right expectations with the customers so you're not overwhelmed with everything that might be coming in because you were trying to help the customer out, uh, which is a, a pitfall that I see you know, myself at times, but other CSMs fall into is trying to help too much and you just kind of get overwhelmed or burnt out um, and definitely focusing in on where can I provide value? Where can I step in and say, okay, I will help you out here, but I will need you to do this as well. So you'll set those expectations and then over time, those expectations will be pushed against. Um, it happened with students and you have to set boundaries, yep. you know, saying like, no, you cannot do your homework while I'm trying to teach for another class. Right. Um, right. I know, you know, Miss so-and-so has a lot of homework, but it's called homework. You need to do it at home. This is my class. Same with customers that sometimes you do need to step, step up and kind of make sure that you're not allowing them to not run over you because you do want to help them as a CSM, but making sure that you're not setting yourself up for failure as a CSM for them by per trying to provide for them over and over and over something that's really not sustainable. I think because I was teaching, I had the ability, you know, learning how to say no a lot that's applied to CS. And those times where I'm getting a customer for the first time or it's transferring to me from another CSM and they might say, hey, can we have a weekly call? And I'm like, no, I, I, it's not that I don't want to. You seem like a great person. But when it comes to the sustainability of our relationship, a weekly call for, for, my, for my business is not sustainable um, for most of our accounts. When it comes to pushing back into the customer that's always something that's you know uncomfortable because you don't want them to get mad because a lot of the times your kpis are riding on their happiness or their success but if you can uh some of the phrases that i use when it comes to customers is like uh, i've seen the most success with this um basically building out a story to them telling them like i'm going to take care of you even though it doesn't seem like it right now because you've asked for this and i'm telling you no i'm not going to do that giving them an alternative saying like, oh, here, have you thought about doing this? Or can we set this up? Or, you know, don't, don't wait to reach out to me, just shoot me over an email, because I have a lot of customers that want to talk about everything on a call, and making sure it's like, okay, well, we can do that. But I think our time is going to be most productive if we figure out what can be done via email, and what are the resources you have. So when we have that call, whether it's 30 minutes or an hour, it's most productive. So same way with students, it's like basically pushing back against them when it comes to how long are you spending on your time on your homework? Like it's most likely going to take you about 45 minutes or an hour to do. Um, if you're not doing that, you can't just do it in my classroom. You have to go and take ownership of that um, so we can actually have that relationship and you're not, you know, drowning in whatever you're doing um, or anything like that. So boundaries you know expectations expectations boundaries yeah makes sense very 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 insightful good uh, very insightful well i i gotta tell you patrick um you're i like the way you think uh and uh you know you clearly have the skills and the mindset uh to have a long career in customer success um so so thanks for uh participating uh, today on on this uh, on this podcast, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to do this again. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate the kind of words, Andrew. It's uh, it's been a lot of fun, and I'm excited to kind of see where CS uh, goes um, in the in the grand world um, that we live in. Yeah, things are things are getting interesting. All right. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.